from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. We begin tonight with new information. We're familiar with Dahir Adan. He's the man shot and killed after going on a stabbing rampage at a St. Cloud, Minnesota mall. Well, we learned today that his brother is being held in the Cass County Jail. Valley News Team's Bradford, uh, rather our immigration and relocation reporter, Bradford Eric, has been following this story throughout the day for us. Bradford? While the investigation into Dahir Adan now sits with the FBI's Joint Terrorism Task Force, Abdullah Adan is behind bars tonight, staring down drug charges. Those charges stem from a traffic stop back in June. An officer smelled marijuana coming from the car, and various amounts of drugs and money were found. Adan appeared in court today, too, asking to be furloughed so he could attend the funeral of his brother, a man praised by ISIS as being, quote, a soldier of the Islamic State. Abdullah Adan is also part of the group of four Muslim inmates who are suing the Cass County Jail, alleging they were fed pork and that the information wasn't being disclosed. Adan also has an ICE detainer issued against him, meaning local law enforcement is asked to hold him an additional 48 hours after being released, so federal officials can decide if they want to deport him. Furthermore, Abdullah Adan is appealing a previous drug conviction from last year, and that's pending with the North Dakota Supreme Court. All right, thank you so much, Bradford. We contacted Adan in jail asking if he would like to speak with us about his brother, but he said no. Rescue crews were able to pull a man from the Red River late this afternoon. The call coming in around 4.30 off of Harwood Drive in South Fargo. Crews positioned themselves at two locations. They were able to get him to the riverbank safely. He was taken by ambulance to a nearby hospital. The man's name and condition are not being released. Tonight, we have an exclusive look at the other side of the story regarding the protest and delay of the Dakota Access Pipeline project in southwestern North Dakota. Union representatives and construction workers say the government's recent decision to delay the project over environmental and cultural concerns simply isn't fair. And it's putting people out of work. Valley News Team's Neil Carlson has a story you'll only see here. Petroleum is used to produce thousands of different products that all of us use every day. Even protesters use oil to get their vehicles to the protest site near Cannonball, North Dakota. Union rep Danny Hendricks says stopping the project now simply is not fair. And it's putting around 1,000 pipeline workers he represents out of work. What's that going to do to the future for private industry that wants to build inf infrastructure that they go through all this two or three or four or five year process and it's all approved and then all of a sudden they say oh well not really it's not really approved 260 miles east of that protest site over in clearbrook minnesota the enbridge pipeline distribution site moves crude oil all over the eastern united states via pipelines and there are quite a few studies that will tell you pipelines are the safest way to transport the oil that all of us use for Clearbrook, Minnesota, population 520, the pipeline industry is the economic lifeblood for folks who live here and many others in the surrounding area. The pipeline is very important to the city of Clearbrook. Um, it employs a lot of people in our area, plus it helps support our local businesses on Main Street, our grocery store, our hardware store, our gas stations. Jared Laney is a pipeline welder making over $50 an hour. His wife Casey is a welder's helper who is currently taking a break from her job to care for their children. I, I just hope that people can take the time and educate themselves and know that the safest way to, to um, transport this product that we all need as Americans is through a pipeline. The union rep says what's happening now with the delay of the North Dakota pipeline project is a reversal of history. After construction's already started, after it's been approved, after the permits are in place, and they just changed their mind, much like, much like the, uh, the white men did to the Indians 150 years ago. From Clearbrook, Minnesota, Neil Carlson, Valley News Live. Pipeline protesters say they're concerned about a possible leak of that North Dakota pipeline contaminating Missouri River water. They also claim the pipeline's route goes through a historic cultural site on the Standing Rock tribal land. 
No complaining about today's weather. It's nice to feel that warmth again. Hutch is here with a look at tonight's forecast. Hutch? Thank you, Andrea. The fall color is really shining out there on this, the last full day of summer. Here is a look at the radar. Still a few pesky showers along the international border. Also in Ottertail County, some spotty sprinkles. A lot of heat in southern Minnesota and southern South Dakota firing some strong storms on the radar there as well. For us, none of that. 60s with a northeast breeze at around 10 miles per hour. And that equinox does fall tomorrow morning as we approach the 921 hour. That is when the direct rays of the sun will be right over the equator and we'll be celebrating a new season with color and hopefully with at least a little warm weather. I'll have details on what you can expect in your seven day planner coming up here in just a few moments. All right, thanks, Hutch. You bet. And of course, you can stay up to date on the weather conditions where you are anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just download the Storm Team weather app to get the latest weather conditions and even follow the radar live. Search VNL Weather in the App Store. Police for the University of North Dakota say it's still unclear whether a Snapchat picture was meant as a joke or what some are calling an act of racism. UND police and administration are investigating a harassment complaint, complaint after the picture was shared on Facebook calling out the school to take action. You're seeing the picture there on your screen. The Facebook user says her friend allegedly left her phone in the room, only to have three other students post a picture on her Snapchat story with a caption referencing her race. UND police say a harassment report was made by two people, including the victim in the incident. Students that we spoke with on campus today say they want to know more about the situation and the relationship between the people involved. Uh, I mean, it's, again, like from a blunt perspective, it's harsh, it's racist. You know, this is not cool to be posting on social media. Now, taking a step back and thinking, you know, looking at, you know, some of the uh, context clues as their faces, and I clearly, I don't know the people personally. This could very well have been, you know, friendly humor gone wrong. UND's president released a statement to students saying he's shocked that people should think this is a joke adding the people pictured are not current or former student athletes as some suspected on social media. The man charged with raping a woman in the bathroom of a Mapleton, North Dakota gas station last December appeared in court this Wednesday and he says he's not getting the medication he needs. Abdul Rahman Ali appeared before a judge in Cass County Court. About a week ago, Ali filed a letter with the court saying he had trouble communicating with his counselors and that, quote, I need more understanding. Ali's family was also present in the courtroom, again making the argument that he is mentally ill and needs help. Ali's next court appearance is scheduled for October. A Crookston woman has been arrested on charges she assaulted a police officer. Joan Helsine Sadow faces a fourth degree assault charge for allegedly assaulting a Crookston police officer while he was trying to make an arrest. It's a charge that carries a maximum sentence of one year in jail if she's convicted. She was also charged with disorderly conduct. Police have not yet released details surrounding that incident. A massive fire destroyed a grain elevator in Kennedy, Minnesota early this morning. Someone passing by reported the fire about 1230 this morning at the farmer's elevator. That's 20 miles south of the Canadian border on Highway 75. By the time firefighters arrived, it was engulfed. Crews from more than half a dozen surrounding towns were called in to help out. The fire chief says their basic job was to keep it from spreading to houses on the block behind the fire. Cause is still under investigation. The elevator was partially full of wheat and soybeans. Only 48 days until election day, but many of you will soon be able to vote well before then. In Minnesota, early voting starts Friday. Minnesota Secretary of State Steve Simon not only urges students to vote, but is also helping them understand how to do it. He's making several stops in northwestern Minnesota, talking about the early voting process. If you wish to vote early, you can learn how on mnvotes.org website. Meanwhile, in North Dakota, absentee voting begins on September 29th in both Cass and Grand Forks counties. And make sure you tune in tonight to watch Christine Stanwood and Robert Hahn. They are on the new Valley News Live at 9. That's over on Fargo CW. Here's a look at some of the programming this evening on the CW. It starts off with magicians Penn and Teller with their Fool Us show at 7, followed up by two episodes of Whose Line Is It Anyway, starting at 8. And then it's Valley News Live at 9 on Fargo CW, followed by Seinfeld at 9.30. If you have questions about where to find the CW, we have posted information on our website, valleynewslive.com. 
Hunters are getting ready for the waterfowl opener this weekend. What duck and goose numbers look like this season later on Valley News Live at 6. And a lot of us in the southern Red River Valley saw temperatures rise into the 70s for our last full day of summer. 60s up north. I'll have details on our chances of rain as we close out this work week and this season. Coming up next. You're watching Valley News Live on TV, online, and on the go. Always on, wherever you are, whenever you need to know. Valley News Live.